and welcome to episode four of the Doll's House Build. In this episode, we're going to be starting the painting. But the first thing what we'll be doing initially is just sealing some of the parts which aren't going to be painted. So this, um, as we spoke about, you'll notice the little button there, which I love, is the back of the basement. And because this is not going to be part painted at all, it'll be painted on the other side, but not on the back. I'm going to just seal it with this MDF sealer. The underside of the base, the basement base, I'm going to seal as well around the edges and the top side of the basement roof because that's going to then sit underneath the main house and because I'm not painting it I'm just going to give it a sealer so it just has some protection. I don't envision it's ever going to be in a moist area but I'd, I feel better if it is um, just had that little extra protection so that's what we're going to do today and then we're going to move on to painting the other parts. So I've just given this a really really good shake before I've undone it. Undone it. It does say on the back that it will look like a milky consistency, which it does, um, to apply quite liberally and then just leave it because it will dry clear. And after it's dried clear, you can paint it. So if I make a mistake and accidentally um, touch a little bit that I'm not supposed to or that I need in the future to finish in a different colour or something, it's not going to affect it. The dreaded warping. So I thought I'd just make a quick video while I've noticed this um, because it could have happened during storage or whilst I've had it here. But if you do ever have any boxes of dollhouse kit like this that you put away, always store them flat on the floor. If you store them up against something, there's a good chance that they will end up warping. And I've just noticed here on this one, can you see, it's not exactly flat. There's a little bit of warping in there. Now it's not too bad and hopefully it's it's the um, bottom of the basement. So the weight on top will straighten it out a little bit anyway. But just be aware um, of how you store kits just to make sure that this doesn't happen. One way to cure it is quite simple. Just put it up on the way the archers, whichever the, the bend is like this one's sort of curved ever so slightly that way and just put something really heavy on top some books and you'll often find it uh, it sort of straightens itself out but yeah just something to be aware of and certainly when you're painting or you're putting any water-based paint on like this that's going to soak in that will make it more malleable as well so just make sure that you dry in anything like this uh, on a flat surface so obviously this is on a table or on a floor or something that's just not going to um, allow it to to bend at all. We'll be starting finally a little bit of uh, painting and decorating. So this is the underside of the base. Well, what is to be the basement roof? So this will be flipped over, and the grooves will sit on top of the structure below. So this is the ceiling. Now, with all the kits I had, I actually love to paint the ceilings with white silk. Um, it just looks really nice. White is completely ageless. It tends to last for ages if you get a decent quality white paint. And the silk gives a really nice shimmer. I like silk on roofs in my own house and I like it in the doll's house as well. So I thought we had some MDF primer and as I've looked, we do have MDF primer. However, you can see how old that is. So I'm not sure what state that's going to be in. So I'll open the tin and have a look. Um, and if it's good to go, we'll start with the priming. If not, then obviously I'll have to go and buy some more. Okay, so that was a lot harder than what I thought. I've totally bent the tin lid trying to get it off. Look at that. And I suspected it is no good at all. So I'm going to have to get some new primer, I think. So I've just found this in the shed. Um, this will do as a primer. It says it's multi-surface, so it should be fine. Now, as I've opened the lid, there is a bit of debris fell in because it has gone a little bit rusty. But if I move that to one side, you can see that there's a lot of paint in there, decent paint. So what I'm gonna do, I've got a spoon and a little cup. This is from a well-known chicken restaurant and might have had gravy in. <laughs> If you um, if you start to get into this hobby, you will be picking these kind of things up and saving them from everywhere for paint pots. And, you know, random things will happen, like you'll it'll be Christmas Day and somebody will be chucking something away and be like, no, 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 I can use that in a miniature. And you'll end up with all kinds of rubbish in a box. But yeah, they're really good to serve as little paint pots. So I'm just going to scoop out with a spoon some of the good paint, put it in there, and then we're going to brush on. 
Um, this is just a nylon brush. I think it's just a one inch 25 mil brush. Um, I like these because they go on really, really smoothly. But for the finish, I'm just going to paint this on because it's the undercoat. But for the actual finish, I will use a roller um, just to get a really smooth finish on there um, when, I, when I do the actual white silk paint. But for the primer, this one will be fine. Um, so yeah, I will get started. So this seems to be going on really, really well. Um, what I would say is just make sure the grooves that you're not getting any paint if you go like that, that you don't get a blob of paint in the grooves because it's going to be really difficult to chip out. Um, and the other thing is, obviously, bear in mind that the walls are going to um, go into that groove and this bit here on the outside is going to be on the outside of the house. So you don't need to paint that. Um, I don't know how that's going to look until it's all built and what, it's, what you know what colour I'm going to be doing. That depends on how I'm decorating the outside. So I'll not worry too much about that. But like I said, at this stage, um, you really don't need to be painting that bit. So one of the things that I have decided quite early on is to have the... I want all the hallways to match and be uniform. So what I've decided to do is actually paint them. Um, now, I'm not sure on colour, but because I'm going to be painting, I am just going to prime them as well. So as you can see, that is the... Um, these are the floors, so there's the back... Uh, sorry, this is the back board. So that's the back of the basement and the back of the kitchen. And I've just painted in the middle, which will be the back of the... Um, basement hallway and then here I've just got the basement hall and the left hand kitchen which again this is why it's a really good idea to write on them and that side which is the right hand basement hall so I'm just going to get those primed up as well so this is the hallway which backs on to the kitchen so the kitchen door will be here and that will go through into the kitchen and this is the hallway and the stairs will obviously come up here that's the little stair bit so do you remember the last video when I drew a line when it was all put together just to show where um, to paint to? So this is the line. So this little bit beneath that will actually go in the groove. So you don't want to paint that because you want it to adhere and it will adhere better when you glue it when it doesn't have paint on. Same for all these other bits. Don't paint any of the edges of these bits at all because nearly all of these will be glued in apart from probably that front one but we can touch that up once it's built anyway and the same with the doors you're going to have doors there and surround so again don't paint the um don't paint any of the edges it's just the actual main flat surface that you want to be painting It's a good idea when you start a new project to get yourself a notebook or something like this, just a jotter. I normally use these square jotters for planning like this, for furniture builds, just because they have the squares and it's really easy to have a look um, in terms of scale. Maybe use the squares for per inch or per centimetre, etc. And then, so I have this and then I have just a, a notebook, just a, a lined um, notebook just to take notes i actually have it at the side of my bed because you'll be surprised how many times you wake up in the night and think of something and, and you need to write it down so yeah it's good to have an ideas book um this initial part here i just i've drawn out obviously the the main house diagram and i just want to run some ideas um as to what i have in mind at the moment but it is an ongoing process and don't be frightened if you know when you get a kit or um, a refurbishment house to do that you don't know exactly what rooms you want to be what. It is an evolving process sometimes. So I've just obviously done a diagram of the house. These are the hallways which are pretty much will just have stairs in. There isn't a lot more I can do with those because you'll come up one set of stairs along a little platform up another and there'll only be this small part at the front. So I don't think there'll be any room there for any furniture or anything. Um, and then obviously there's a door here where the basement is and there's a door there at the ground floor level as well. In terms of rooms, I have an idea. I obviously need a kitchen, a living room um, and then some bedrooms. And 
I was deciding really whether to put the kitchen here um, or here and uh, but then the problem is if I have a kitchen and then a living room on this level then if I want a dining room which I do I'm probably looking at putting a dining room here and I'm getting up to sort of first floor bedroom levels now so I wanted a dining room here really and a living room and I didn't want to divide the rooms too much certainly with a living room because I want the big space so because of that I've decided to put the kitchen here in the basement now although it is a basement it does actually have the bay windows at the front so it is actually like a, f a very well lit room and I think it will serve nice as a kitchen especially because the courtyard is going to be at the front here and I think it'd be nice to have you know with the front door you could be in there you know having your morning coffee or, or tea in my case and then come out the door and into a little you know enclosed patio area to sit in the sunshine it's weird how you start thinking of little scenarios like you're gonna you know turn yourself into a miniature and run around the thing um it's quite funny but so yeah so i think that'd be nice so this one is going to be the kitchen um this one i haven't decided what i want to do with this room yet i did have an idea of putting um of having it just as a, as a basement sorry uh, maybe utility with washing machine etc and then just a storage unit but then i realized actually on the front there's a big bay window so if you had a room that that lent itself to having a big bay window you, you certainly i don't think would use it as a storage unit it would be a, another room in the house so i haven't decided on that one yet uh obviously it still needs some thought Ground floor, I want a dining room here, I think, so it's just above the kitchen, and a living room there. Um, and here, the first floor, I need a bathroom somewhere, and I need a bedroom, maybe a guest bedroom, and I'm not sure I want to give a full, huge room like that over to a bathroom. There's only so much you can put in a bathroom, and not many houses have massive, massive bathrooms, so... I might put a divider, if I'm putting the bathroom there, I might put a divider or something there. And then, I don't know what I'm going to do with this bit yet. And then on the top floor, I thought about a master bedroom. And then maybe a walk-in wardrobe and an ensuite. So this whole level is for a master bedroom. And then the attic. Um, I haven't really decided what to do with the attic yet. Whether it's going to be a sort of storage room and a, a little craft room or something. Or whether... Um, I might, it depends on the eaves, I guess, once, once it's built, um, because I might end up just having to use this bit, putting a little cupboard door in and using this in the other side of storage and then having two little small rooms here for something. Um, so yeah, I haven't decided as of that as to what I want to do with that yet, but I just wanted to make this brief little video just to give you an idea of, of some of what was going on in my head. And um, I'll leave the main design video for later we'll probably do um a, an outside design video to explain how i how i plan to design and decorate the outside and then we'll do a bit more of an in-depth video um on the inside um as you can see just to mention i have done all this in pencil it's a good idea to do it in pencil um you know obviously you can just make any changes as, as you your mind changes because you probably will make two or three changes as you go along um, and I know I keep harping on about it, but I can't stress enough how important it is to plan things. If you, if you rush in and you, you know, you're know you not quite sure of something and you do rush in, then you might be disappointed later on and you'll never be happy with it. So if you're unsure, wait, do some more research, wait a week, wait two weeks. It's not going anywhere until you're happy with the decision that you've made. So I think we'll leave that video there. I am wanting to keep these between about 10 and 20 minutes. Um, these aren't on a flat surface now, but they're just being stored. They're very, very temporarily because I'm going to be um, looking at doing some more painting um, later today. Uh, the next couple of videos, we're going to look at sort of I, a, an idea of decoration on the outside and then the house plans in a little bit more depth and we'll probably start a little bit more painting. So until then, take care.